You might have read about it in the old farmer's almanac, somewhere on the internet, or maybe just from hearsay. It goes something like this. You count cricket chirps for 14 seconds, and then add 40, and you get the temperature in Fahrenheit. There's also a formula for Celsius. Technically, this is true. But there are a number of reasons why you won't be using the cricket outside your window as a thermometer. To understand why, we need to look deeper into how crickets work. We're also going to look into how tree crickets are linked to the science history of temperature and cricket songs. The popular image of a cricket is something like a common field cricket, a dark brown or black creature with a compact body and a round head. But tree crickets could hardly look more different, even though they're in the same family as field crickets. They look more like a wispy grasshopper. There are more than 20 species of tree cricket north of Mexico. The southeast U.S. has the most diversity, with 15 species. Here in western Oregon, we have five species, snowy, western, Riley's, prairie, and four-spotted tree crickets. With only a few exceptions, these tree crickets look nearly alike. Experts distinguish them by looking at tiny field marks, like the little marks on the first two antenna segments. When they sing, tree crickets raise their wings straight up and then vibrate them side to side. Okay, it's true that when it's colder, crickets sing more slowly than when it's warm. The same principle is also true for other singing insects. The concept was first addressed scientifically in an 1881 edition of Popular Science Monthly where Margaret W. Brooks measured the relationship between cricket chirp rates and the ambient temperature and found a close correlation. In 1897, Amos Dolbear published a formula expressing this relationship, known thereafter as Dolbear's Law. You count chirps for 14 seconds, then add 40, and you get the temperature in Fahrenheit. Dolbear didn't mention the species in his study, although future scientists deduced that he was using the snowy tree cricket as his benchmark. Because of this, the species is also called the thermometer cricket, and it's one of the most predictable species in regards to temperature. Different formulas for this species have been published, such as counting 13 or 15 seconds and adding 40, so I'm not sure which formula is correct. There's an episode of the sitcom The Big Bang Theory where Howard and Sheldon wager over whether the chirping they hear in their apartment is a snowy tree cricket. Sheldon mentions Dolbear's Law, but instead of using the cricket to calculate the temperature, he uses the ambient temperature and the number of chirps to identify the species. They take the captured cricket to an entomologist, and it's identified as a field cricket, and Howard wins the bet. It's interesting that Sheldon used Dolbear's Law and the known temperature of the room to identify the cricket rather than using the cricket song to calculate the temperature. A wise choice by the writers of the TV show because, as it turns out, counting the chirps of an unknown cricket species and expecting to determine the temperature is a lost cause for anybody who isn't an expert in cricket songs. Now there are a lot of tree cricket species and many chirp at different rates at the same temperature. At any given place and time, there are a number of species singing, and to calculate the temperature, you'd need to identify each species by song, and then use the correct formula for that species. Also, as this episode of the Big Bang Theory illustrates, snowy tree cricket and field crickets chirp at about the same rate. Furthermore, temperature calculation using a simple formula is not even an option for species that sing with long trills, because there are no chirps to count. We recorded these trilling tree crickets near our home in the Willamette Valley, but we can't identify the species because we didn't note the ambient temperature during the recording. But we can narrow it down by habitat. Because we have two species of tree cricket who live in fields, prairie and four-spotted tree crickets. Here we have both Riley's and snowy tree crickets singing, and we know this only by comparison because the snowy sings faster. This one is probably a western tree cricket because it sings with a trill, and it was found in its preferred shrubby habitat. 
but we're not certain because it could have been a prairie or four-spotted tree cricket from a nearby field. As the wings vibrate, they appear to slowly move in and out, but this may be due to an artifact of the video frame rate interfering with the rate of the vibrations. Finding a seen tree cricket is a challenge, but an unforgettable thrill. With a flashlight in hand, move slowly towards the singing tree cricket. Turn the flashlight on away from the tree cricket so I can't see a sudden change in light. And slowly pan the light beam towards the cricket. They don't seem to mind the bright light, but any sudden change in light or sudden movements will startle them. You don't want to bump any leaves or branches because that will scare them for sure. If the cricket stops singing, go ahead and turn the light off and wait a couple of minutes and it might start back up again. You may not get it on the first try, but try a few times. I usually spot a singing tree cricket within about 15 minutes. Or maybe you'd just rather sit out on a warm evening and enjoy the ambiance of the tree cricket chorus. That's fine too. If you're watching this when you can't get out to listen to the chorus, check out our video of Cricket Song. Also, read more about tree crickets in our summer 2019 newsletter. See the link in the description below. In this issue, we also have an article about black soldier flies. <laughs>